hello everybody and welcome back to Wapleville. I guess I should say welcome back to Middle Earth because we're going to be doing some more of our landscapes and uh, I don't know if you can see the pictures in the corners down here but we've got ourselves a little bit of an Edoras scene that we want to do. Last week we did the Argonoth right here and that was really 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 fun. So let's continue and we're going to, hey Armored Wolf, how the heck are you doing? <laughs> oh my goodness. Here let's uh it has been really fun working on these things. Uh, I, we're going to be doing the same thing with the kind of the blue sky here, using our Prussian blue and mixing that with the brilliant yellow pale and such. Uh, we've got a, we'll be talking about the palette a few times. I mean, there's not a whole bunch out here. Not a whole bunch out there. Just the white, brilliant yellow pale. we got our diet cadmium yellow deep. A little terra rosa there. A little fanchion red over there. Usuals over here, though we do have some burnt umber down here. So indigo with the black spinel, Van Dyke brown, Indian yellow next to the burnt umber, asphaltum over here, and then down here you got yourself some perlene black and a little bit of the Prussian blue. I'm just going to hit that perlene black with a couple of shots of my thinner right here. So Armored Wolf, I <laughs> hope that your evening has been productive as well. We got Angraham in the house. Angraham, how the heck are you doing? All right, just like we've done before, what are we going to do? We're going to divvy this thing up into those sections right here. Let's uh, do something like this. But basically cutting it down into nine bits. Why are we doing that? Because once we get these lines drawn in, we'll be able to illustrate that for you. Here we go. There's our lines in there. Because we want our center of interest to be in these points right here. Not over here, not over here, certainly not in the center, but off to the sides. So, Angraham, I hope that you're doing well. Here, we'll just start grab a couple of these guys and, well, again, where, where's the center interest here on our Lonely Mountain? It's over in this quadrant or over here. So, it, nothing in the center and nothing way off to the sides. All the interesting places, not dead center. And even here, you know, we've got this little interesting area. Well, that's off to the side as well. Hey, Olive, nice to see you again. Ah, uh, let's see. Ah, uh, yes, I already hear about that, Angraham. <laughs> We've definitely had some weather challenges here. And actually, that has caused, like, the, the big headaches and stuff. I assume that's what was happening to you, right? Yeah, big-time headaches because of uh, it gets cooler, then it's warmer and humid, and your head just wants to explode pretty much, right? That's what I'm thinking. So, again, nice to see you again, Olive. Now, we've got to try and figure out our composition right here. And, of course, we're probably going to want your, your Medjuseld up here, right? And maybe your horse dudes, your three hunters down here, and then everywhere in between. Again, we don't want to have anything really interesting in here. We want to avoid that. Ah, so, uh, yeah, Olive... Uh, Nice to see you again. I know that uh, it's been a little bit crazy for you there. You haven't been able to necessarily catch as many streams as you would have liked lately. And hopefully that uh, that starts to clear up a little bit and you can maybe have some some more enjoyment. All right. I think we're going to make a couple of changes to this here. I like the idea of this wall being up here, but I don't know. Well, let, let's get to our... Th our th Three, well, actually, it's not the three hunters. Well, it is. It's the three hunters plus Gandalf. What am I? What am I saying here? Three hunters plus Gandalf. We're just gonna, again, create the impression that there's something here for right now. Let's see about our mountain range here. That's gonna be in our far background. Let's do a little bit more with our Medjuseld right here. And I'm also gonna grab one of my references here so that I can see this a little bit better. Here, let's have this uh, run down this way. Yeah, actually, I kind of like the idea of them being a little bit closer to the camera here. So there's your... Oh, that's going to be Gimli and, and Legolas over here. Okay. A little bit of a bow right there, and it looks like you got Aragorn over here. Let's get a little bit more of our background mountains over there. So yeah, this quadrant, we're pretty much ignoring that, right? 
And I'm looking here. Let's uh, start to create the effect of uh, some buildings here. And then uh, leading up to our Medjusel, maybe even a little bit of a roof peak right there. Uh, and then, ooh, actually this start, starts to turn into the, oh, the cliff face. That's what that is. And then it's going to run down to where our fortress walls are. A couple of the, the towers. Okay, well, I think we'll have that far tower come out to there. And that's going to be our backdrop mountain there. And then, again, a little bit of Medjusel up here. Make that maybe a little more recognizable here. Like so. It just reminds me of all the Rohan terrain that we made. That was uh, that was a lot of fun. I hope we can get back to our terrain Thursdays. I really do. Although it seems like people are enjoying the Landscapes of Middle Earth series here. I think, what is this? The This is the fifth one that we've done now. I'll get a couple of other buildings here, maybe in front of that. And again, that kind of just sits along the edge of that cliff face. Comes down to here. And is this our main gate here? There's sort of a main gate right there, and then some more of our towers. I mean, well, such as they are, it's it's really more of a stockade as opposed to this impenetrable fortress. And maybe we'll have one more of those towers here. I will try to remember to take as many pictures of this as I can. Uh, for whatever reason, on Facebook, I kept getting this whole thing with the owls, where it's like, draw a couple of circles and draw the rest of the owl. And I was like, uh, well, really? Maybe you should just watch the video that is linked in the description. <laughs> because uh, I guess they were upset that there was only five photos. Of course, you know, if people weren't upset about something, then they uh, probably wouldn't be alive. You know, let's keep going with a couple more of our buildings here. Now, I can't make it look uh, too much like, say, Oh, there's that little tower right here, too. Can't make it look too much like Minas Tirith here, which, you know, eventually we'll we'll get ourselves to a little bit of Minas Tirith action, too. Now, what's interesting in, in uh, the reference images is basically from the actual scene is that these are they're practically the same height here. We don't want to do that, right? Hey, Rascal, nice to see you again. Nice to see you. I guess uh, one thing about the the weather still offering challenges is that we have seen apparently that some of those repairs that we did, they have actually seemed to make a difference. So I guess that's one way to think of it. Here, let's maybe push this tower over this way. And then let's start thinking about horses. we got tails there. And then this is uh, essentially just some very, very... That's some really tall grass right there. <laughs> that is some very tall grass. I don't know if that would be sawgrass or whatever, but uh, that is some very tall grass. I guess that, uh, no, that is not, uh, well, well, we'll break that up into a different shape here, but interesting. Here, let's uh, do some more of this wall here. Guess maybe I will throw another one of our towers right there. So nice to see you, Rascal. I appreciate you joining us. Now, oh, uh, I did finish filming this video last night, and I think what we'll do for maybe our Saturday show is I got five more of these guys, and that's the TMM with the gold. So maybe we'll just try and uh, hit the other five of those. It's it's not a super special commission. I just thought those would be interesting to, to screw around with a true metallic metal gold. Oh, thanks, Rasko. It's it's kind of interesting. Yeah, I don't get to do this very much 
at all. It's, it's what, sort of like the non-metallic, or the uh, true metallic metals, right? I don't really get a chance to do that. But we're, now that we're doing our landscapes of Middle Earth, we actually get a chance to maybe do a little bit more of the drawing and a little bit more of the landscape painting, of course. Can't object to that, right? All right, I'm going to make sure that that is... It's going to be a nice little shadow area right there. And then we've got to just figure out how many of these uh, buildings are we going to have that. I guess they got to be a little bit, ironically enough, larger than your mid just sailed, even though they're pretty small buildings by comparison, but they are significantly close, and there's a whole big batch of those buildings there. Ah, so there is a little bit of a shadow then on these these towers here. I thought so. And the other thing too is that the wall is, and I'll never forget the, whoever the historical guy is that talks about fortresses and such, he was he was not super happy about the way they they did the stone and then the little bit of wood palisade on top of that, which would just kind of indicate right here. I doubt that's going to be mostly covered with the paint anyway, so. Ah, uh, Rascal has uh, watched a lot of Bob Ross. Now, uh, Rascal, you know, it was interesting. That was, that's another thing I might want to try and do is some portraits, possibly. I think that could be fun as well. Uh, so, Olive, if you, if you recall, we don't, uh, there's really no good oil paint for your uh, metallics and that's what we made taking the metallic powders from Green Stuff World mixing them with the linseed oil and then we also took the interference powders mixed those with the linseed oil now of course you can also uh, get the interference paints and here we'll since we just knocked that over we're gonna try and pick that up and find you one of the interference paints here so they make four of these, but they don't make his interference gold. They make red, green, blue, and purple. Yeah, and purple. Because, yeah, unfortunately, Olive, with the the regular tubes of paint, most of the time what you're going to get is complete garbage as far as metallic paints. It It's pretty much just going to look like glitter. Yeah, you're basically it's glitter and linseed oil mixed together, and that's probably <laughs> not something that you're going to want. I'm thinking, yeah, you could probably do without the glitter. Although if somebody wants to do glitter marines or something like that, I guess that's one of the more popular uh, splinter chapters of marines. You could probably do that too. And again, I'm just uh, all I'm trying to do is create an impression of something here. Hey, Grumdy, nice to see ya. So yeah, Olive, it's just the Green Stuff World powders, the interference powders, and the linseed oil mixed in a... This is one of them right here. Now, you might want a little bit of thinner on hand because some of them are just a little bit thicker than others. Yeah, it's the same exact thing that we did with the interference paints when we mixed those two. And so, Grumdy, nice to see you in here. Uh, I gr actually, Grumdy, sorry I, haven't sent <coughs> sorry I haven't had a chance to send you messages in the last few days. <coughs> sorry about that. may just need to uh, grab a cough drop already. But I was, man, uh, Grumdy, I don't know if your parents, uh, I was kind of worried about them last night because there was massive stuff that came through. Now, for whatever reason, we got really, really lucky, and we just happened to be in maybe one of the mildest pockets here because even at my sister's house just 10 minutes away, there was big branches laying on the ground and stuff. So there was some massive stuff that came through here. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, well, Twitch is, I don't know, I'm kind of, I'm hoping that tomorrow and Saturday are not going to be messed up. Well, actually, last Friday wasn't messed up, but last Saturday with the whole Olympics and all that kind of stuff, I'm hoping that there's not all that live streaming going on and that we can just enjoy a regular Saturday thing here. Because, uh, oh yeah, I don't know if you saw this, uh, Grumdy, so this is the latest video now, actually, I put up the final episode of Series 5, so or Series 26, sorry, 
that that's up there. That was episode five of series 26. This is our latest metals workshop here, and that was actually utilizing that uh, golden stush that we made here. So this was uh, one of the things we used. We also used the interference gold that we made. Uh, also, they did the hydraulic cement, and I worked for that store. Yeah, Grumdy, I think I have a kit that's like that. That that's the kit that I wanted to use. So I'm glad that I'm really glad that worked for him. Because I I was a little bit actually I was kind of worried as much about all the the wind and everything as as everything else because uh, and power outages and all that kind of thing. All right, again a horse right here. Uh, we have our other. There, that's got to be Shadowfax with our Gandalf sitting on him. Okay. Hey, War Squirrel, nice to see you again. Ah, thank you very much. I appreciate that. So, yeah, we've got, I think, five more of those guys, and I thought it could be interesting to do those uh, Saturday again. Just hoping, hoping that. Uh, we won't have the crazy problems that we did last week with basically Twitch just shutting down pretty much. It just kind of went bonkers. Okay, here, let's uh, maybe we'll have this go off in front of them just a little bit too. Uh, Angry Ham. Uh, well, obviously, since there's the whole uh, New Line Cinema and in the all that sort of cease and desist type thing. We're just doing these as original, no prints or anything like that. Because uh, believe me, as a 2D artist who used to do media stuff, you'll see them, believe me. So yeah, these are just going to be one-of-a-kind things. Uh, I'll, obviously, I'll take pictures of them, and, and we'll post them and stuff. But yeah, there will be uh, no prints made of these guys. They will be originals only. Because, yeah, this is, uh, with media stuff, <laughs> uh, you'd never want to make prints of any media stuff ever. And that is, uh, unfortunately, that's just an invitation, as we used to call them, C&Ds. Uh, especially back when we were doing, again, the media stuff. And it's going to erase a little bit of that away, because I don't think we necessarily need that all right there. And it would be it would be fun, but again, that's uh, not necessarily a good idea because you will get hunted down pretty much. We I, well, I know that uh, well, one of them actually was uh, purchased. The Mordor one was purchased. The well, a couple of them are birthday presents. But we'll we'll see if we can't try and make some more. Uh, they're a little bit big for postcards. A little bit big for postcards. Like I said, these are most likely just going to be uh, gifts right here for folks. Because that's actually what I used to do back in the day. Used to used to do paintings as gifts, so why not uh, maybe go back to that again? It's been many, many years since that has happened. Actually, I'm just looking at one of my other references here, just to get a little peek at this. All right, here we will get a couple of other uh, roof angles here. I like that, so it's not all just the hill. Now, they would certainly be very one-of-a-kind postcards, wouldn't they, Angry Him? No doubt about that. All right, now I want to just also maybe snag a quick picture here, too, uh, once we get our, our drawing down. I mean, it's really more of a, it's just a sketch. We're not trying to absolutely draw every last detail of everything here. So, again, our Gandalf over here. You got your Gimli over here with your Legolas over there. Now, fortunately, everybody's got a cloak so that's sort of 
impacts uh, the overall shape of these guys. Uh, well, well, I look at it. Aragorn. It maybe does have a little bit of a bow right there, I guess. So uh, I forget what the na what the name of his horse was. All right, now let's uh, maybe try and get the impression of some grassland right here. Again, want to make sure that we keep the effect of the wooden palisade on top of the stone. I think we need that on our towers as well. We'll make that be the gate right here of some kind. And that'll okay, end there. And then we've got just our regular mountains over there. Okay, so I'm just going to snap uh, a quick picture of this right here and we'll try and remember this as often as we can to take these here pictures okay there we go and it's off to the races here with their palette and we talked about the palette earlier and you just your white brilliant yellow pale a little bit of cadmium yellow deep terra rosa right there fanchion red over there you got indigo, the black spinel, Van Dyke brown here. We do have a little bit of umber back out on the palette. Asphaltum over here, a smidge of Indian yellow. Then over here you got the perline black, which is a really dark green, and then the Prussian blue over there. So let's, uh, again, just like we did on the last couple here, I think we'll go with the cerulean blue sky, which means, hey, guess what? We can just use Prussian blue for that. And we'll mix that with the brilliant yellow pale, which it's really interesting how it, it just looks so red-ish blue to start with, and then as soon as we start to add that brilliant yellow pale, it just transforms into that sky blue color. Hey, Grim, nice to see you again. How the heck are you doing? We'll probably try and get ourselves some nice little clouds in this as well. And you see, we're just kind of scumbling away here. Why? Because we don't need a ton of paint up here. And then as we get further down in the horizon line, we'll start to let a little bit more of that brilliant yellow pale work its way in there. So nice to see you again, Grim. Uh, so Grim, I tried to look for that test thing. Uh, I have a feeling that maybe the the Elegu that I've got doesn't have something like that because there was nothing uh, nothing for testing the screen. The only thing there was was for uh, changing your exposure. There was no uh, there wasn't a, an exposure test. There was just a do you want to move it up or down? That was a, that was it. Unfortunately, no uh, no test function or anything like that. So yeah, let's uh, get a little bit of our lighter color down here. And see the, see the circular motion that we're using? This is what keeps the amount of paint under control here. We don't want a whole ton of paint on this, right? See how that uh, starts to blend together here? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, okay, Grim. Uh, it's just there was, uh, I did it with the manual tools. I, I went into tools and there was no, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll watch the video again. Hey, Steelhead, nice to see you again. Of course, I had all of about two seconds to try doing that because of all the, the weather stuff that's been going on lately. So, yeah, pretty much everything has been off. I think I spent at least three hours last night with every computer in the house turned off. So there was uh, there were not a lot of electric... Well, there was the... the the other, like refrigerators and stuff, those electric devices were on. But the last uh, last two days, there have not been a lot of electric devices turned on. 
But I'm glad that the these are nice and chill for you guys and, and fun to see. Because, well, you know how much I enjoy the heck out of these. Alright, let's go for some perline black here. Maybe we'll mix that with a little bit of our Van Dyke brown here. I might even uh, chuck in a little bit of umber. A little bit of umber too. And I'm going to find some of my darker zones right here. We know we want this to be a little bit darker. Medjusel is going to be darker. Some of this. And then a couple of darks in here. And now let's Guess what? Bringing a little bit of our blue into this. Like so. Uh, let's see, basically you create a large rectangle to run through as a print, but you don't have the vat. And okay, see, it? okay, that's, uh, I'll give that a try. Well, it's not going to be over the next couple of days, that's for sure. <laughs> but we'll, we'll see if we can give that a try at some point. Uh, Printing is pretty much going to be out for a while, no matter what. There's just too many other things, unfortunately, that I have to do. So, yeah, the, the printing is kind of on the back burner for a while, unfortunately. It's kind of a bummer, but uh, we'll we'll try and get back to that as soon as we can. Hey, Trash Remit, nice to see you. And Bettany, well, sorry that you can't uh, stay for too, too long there, Bettany. But hopefully... Uh, you'll be able to join us maybe, maybe on Saturday. As you can see, again, I'm not really worried about the drawing or anything like that. Here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and get a little bit of the Terra Rosa into here. There we are. Just a little, little something to warm up the colors that are a little bit closer to us. because this back here, that's still going to be cooler. So nice to see, hey, Pendrake and Deuce, nice to see you guys. Uh, so yeah, Steel it. I think the last sculpting stream that we did uh, was this. I do believe it was our AON, that was the last sculpting stream. So, so Trash, I hope everything's going well for you. Uh, oh, hey, Grim, have you had any more uh, Discord uh, Discord Hangouts there showing people the nifty stuff you've been doing with the oils? Where's my... Ah, Indigo. That's what I'm looking for here. And that's going to be for some of our mountain there. Eh, let's lighten that up just a little bit uh, with the Brilliant Yellow Pale. Maybe even a hint of the cadmium yellow in that. Uh, well, Trash, we, we definitely got nuked a couple of more times uh, over the last few days, but it would seem like the repairs that I did, not just on our house, but I also was fixing the neighbor's gutters as well because, you know, I have plenty of time to fix everybody's gutters in the entire neighborhood. But I was I, I, I worked on theirs, and that seems to have made a big difference. So hopefully that continues. All right, Bethany. Well, we'll we'll. St I'm sure we'll still be here. I'm sure we'll still be here. Yeah, definitely a a little bit sad about the printing that I was literally just as I was about to start it up again, uh, just kind of took a nosedive. And there's so many other things. Uh, going on that well unfortunately we just won't be able to get back to that for a while okay I'm gonna instead of maybe no nah, I think I'm still gonna use a little bit of the brilliant yellow pale for the snow effects here and let's just start to pop in some initial Snow here, maybe have the, eh, I don't know if you want the mountains going that tall. Again, we don't want it to be as tall as 
what's over here? Yeah, Olive. Uh, <laughs> oh my goodness! I, I I've spent so much time up on that ladder over the last year. It's it's really it's been kind of nuts. I have to say that's a we spent way too much time up on that ladder so far. I'm gonna grab just a smidge more of the sky blue here. for maybe some of the shadow sides of our snow and our mountains here. Okay, grab another one of our brushes here. Let's get some of our lighter green up there maybe. Okay, side of our mountain there. And, and you notice we're just, boom right? There's nothing gentle about what we're doing. We're just going strong. Uh, maybe that needs a little bit more. Oh, what the heck? I'm just grab a little of the Indian yellow, a little bit of the umber there. Ah, uh, school's back in session, so Grim hasn't had much time to paint yet. Well, Grim, uh, I can certainly sympathize with that, for sure. Uh, hopefully, I don't know, is, is there a point after the initial burst where things sort of calm down a little bit? Uh, so Deuce has had all kinds of crazy stuff going on. Yeah, you know, uh, well, that thing that hit us last night, that just charged through Wisconsin, through Minnesota. So, yeah, Deuce, that thing must have lit up your board. I'm guessing. That thing must have really lit up the board. All right, now here I'm thinking. I'll get a little bit of the Terra Rosa, maybe get a little bit of the Umber right here. And something a little bit warmer here. Like so. And if you want to see the, the various stages of that, that, where is it here, the Argonauth here, uh, on Instagram, I do have the five pictures, which kind of show you again, it's, I mean, it looked just as uh, chaotic as that when we first started the other one. Uh, let's see, do not make 130th uh, bite-sized churro. Actually, ooh, churros, angry ham, it's kind of, wow. You won't believe this, uh, angry ham. But at the store today, in the clearance, they had these uh, basically do-it-yourself churros uh, batter. I don't know how many churros you could make with it, but I'm guessing you can make a, a heaping chunk of, or heaping amount of uh, churros there. So yes, believe it or not, that's what I was looking at at the store. It was a bunch of stuff for churros. Okay, let's get a little bit of our burnt umber in there. A little bit of our Indian yellow. And then let's uh, see if we can't lighten this up here a little bit. Uh, well, I won't be, uh, I won't be making a hundred of them, that's for sure. Uh, you don't, don't have to worry about me uh, injuring myself making a hundred of those, because that, uh, that ain't going to happen. Uh, I don't know, maybe it makes a couple of dozen to uh, tops. Uh, next week will be slower, and you'll have the new Broken Anvil, and I really want to try out the Terra Rosa and Indian Red. Yeah, Grim, I know you're super excited about the, uh, what's that called, Broken Anvil again? Those were looking really nifty. All right, now we're going to cool that down just a smidge here because we want that to maybe start to go towards the background. A little bit more of our Indian yellow here. Uh, maybe some brilliant yellow pale with that. Oh, what the heck, maybe even a 
touch of that Terrorosa. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. Thank you so much today. Hello, little hobbits. I spark my ganja. Uh, I guess we better go get uh, better go wake up Sayed in. <laughs> wow, that's that's the first time Gandalf has been in one of the pictures. Oh, thank you so much today. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Because I could definitely use a sip and a sub right now, so that is appreciated. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see, next month will be a good note uh, month for the patrons. Uh, Great Grimdor is doing a gypsy, gypsy theme. Well, that sounds really, that sounds very nice. Here, I'm just going to grab uh, some oh, perline black. And you can see over the, you know, here it starts to get a little bit of a greenish look, but that's more of a warm green right there. And uh, Grumdy has per, uh, contributed some hydration bits. Thank you so much, Grumdy. I appreciate that. Ah, thank you very much. So, you know, I'm going to try and get a little bit of a, a nice warm green down here. Uh, let's see. Ah, finally able to catch a live stream. Well, today, I hope that this is a, a good time for you. Because this is actually the this is supposed to be the usual Thursday time, believe it or not. This is this is what it's supposed to be. It's everything has been interrupted so much with all the craziness the last several weeks. Yeah, Steelhead especially uh well the voice just has a tendency to give out unfortunately. So <laughs> it is appreciated whenever the hydration is offered, no doubt about it. All right, let's see what we can do over here with some of these guys with the perline black, the dark green, maybe even a little bit of our, uh, yeah, a little bit of the, do we want some of the Van Dyke brown in there? Maybe not. Here, let's go, this is kind of a, similar to what we had over here too. But we got some of these uh, dark green cloaks, we'll just, get their silhouettes here and then we'll get our, th our horse silhouettes as well okay and then we'll have to ground these guys here with the that long grass like so uh, let's see. Steel is apparently alive. Okay, yeah, uh, Grim. I think that she, she went. Speaking of live, she went live. Was that was that over the weekend that she went live? Or no, not over the week. It was during the week or something. Now uh, I I just don't know what impact the Olympics is still having on her. You know, if things are not uh, because they're not necessarily going so well with the Olympics. I don't know how that's affected her or not. Or, you know, the crazier that gets, the more it affects her. Let's uh, get some more of our... Oh, I don't know. I'm going to go as full time. A little bit of... Oh, what the heck. We'll let a little touch of Terrorus. Let's work its way into the horse for Aragorn right here. And then uh, the other horses actually are just kind of more... Uh, more like white. All right, a little bit of our Van Dyke brown here on your shadow side. Uh, uh, now, Ultimate Olive, uh, she's a, a translator, so she's had to translate because of everything with the Olympics changing all the time. There's a lot of people frantically, I think, changing their advertising and everything else, and she's had a lot of translating to do. It was going to be busy no matter what, but with all the, are we going to have them, are we not going to have them, this, that, and the other, the advertisers, and I don't know exactly, you know, all she's uh, contracted to do, but it's, it's more just how that's affected her overall job rather than uh, she's involved with the Olympics. 
So let's see, TJ uh, got to dive in oils with my minis rather than just uh, using them for washes. Oh, TBO Hobbies, sorry. Uh, so TBO Hobbies, uh, thank you so much for the kind words. Now, what were the what were your first uh, subjects then for doing uh, some some miniatures with the oils? I hope that you were able to find something really fun to to paint there and that uh, you enjoyed it. Let's see, do I want it to yeah, you know what? I'm going to actually change this around. We're going to we're going to make it we're going to call an audible right here and we'll just uh make a change with this. Where's my Let's make a little bit of a change Ola, right here. Because first of all, I would I want this to actually be a little bit lighter. But I like the idea of this continuing this way instead of back down again. So, And it's also going to give uh, a little bit of a lighter color for these guys to stand out against. So we're making a little bit of a change right here. Grab a little bit of that umber here, too. Okay, yeah, I feel a little bit better about this. Yes, yeah, here, we'll raise this up a little bit more, even. Yeah, this is, this is more like it here. And then we'll change this, too. And then we can have uh, some of our fortress walls up over here now. So uh, uh, TBL, thank you so much for for hanging out. Just as Armored Wolf was saying there, sorry if I, I miss uh, some things in the chat. Uh, one of the things is I have to move my camera, and right now sitting in front of the camera is my ch uh, in front of the chat is my camera. So it's uh, it's a little difficult. So if I uh, if I'm a little late on that. Uh, let's see, the things are more hectic since there are a bunch of people around. Uh, at least according to our last stream. Yeah, I know she was. Uh, and then there's all of this. They, they, you know, are we going to still do this? Are we not going to do this? And people leaving and all that kind of stuff. So uh, it it has not been an easy uh, easy time for. Her, that's for sure. All right, this is where our gate's supposed to be. I'm going to start to block in a few more darks, but I'm also going to get a quick little picture of that. Before we move along too far here, I just want to show that all of the colors have been blocked in. One second here. Okay. Let's see. Today, watched the video on contrast paints a few times. I'm using some of the tips you shared on some fantasy, fantasy miniatures from, <coughs> from Reaper. Is that some Bones 5 stuff today? Because I know that a lot of folks have been, they've been getting their Bones 5. So hopefully that uh, gave you a chance to have a lot of fun with those. I've been seeing lots of, uh, what, reviews on those guys. Okay, we've done that. Now I'm maybe going to come back with some darks here. Some of our... Again, Van Dyke Brown, it's got a little bit of the green in it. Okay, we're starting to build back in our horses and our riders here. But I just, I needed to get all of this figured out. Let's see what we can do maybe with our mountains over, ah, here we go. There we are. I'm going to grab a little bit of that brilliant yellow pail. And let's get our background mountains in place. Ah, Landrest, how you doing? Nice to see you. Sorry that I didn't get a chance to send you a message and and such earlier today and, and let you know there was going to be one of these streams. Now, is uh, do you have the hobby area in place? I know that that's something you've been trying to figure out, okay, where does this stuff go? What's the best way to use the space that I have? 
So I hope you've been able to get that figured out. Let's get our distant mountains here and I think you can see that, well, we're not mixing any thinner with this. You know what, I might just go a little bit uh, further up with that light color. Just take a little bit of my sky color, mix that in there. Also, they're not from Bones 5. As you missed the initial Kickstarter, it might get in on the Bones 5.5. Oh, they reopened the Pledge Manager. My goodness. I swear they probably are, they're probably already on Bones 15 by now. It's like, what do you mean? We just delivered on Bones 5. It's time for Bones 12. The never-ending Bones. Okay, let's get... Yeah, we need to make these relatively light here also because that's going to help our our address kind of pop out from behind there. Now, uh, today we were able to find some fun miniatures that had, well, big surfaces like cloaks and, and stuff like that. All right, and then this we're also going to lighten that up a smidge. And uh, we'll do that. Now we'll leave that one brush with our sky colors on it. We've got plenty of brushes here that we can use. We've got this. Do I want to make this a little bit more of a bluish tone back here? Yeah, let's just uh, make that a little bit. It's not just lighter, but it's a little bit more blue ish. I'm going to grab just a little bit of the perline black. That's our dark green. And I'm also going to grab just a smidge of thinner here because what I want to do is mix that with this. Lighten this just a little bit. And fade that out. Uh, let's see, mostly, oh, people, uh, yeah, yeah, that, hey, Art of Michael, nice to see ya. So, yeah, the pirate ship, that would be be really neat, uh, especially being 28 millimeter, right? Yeah, it's got, what, the three decks or whatever, so it's, uh, that is a really nifty item for sure. But those cloaks are real natural things for, for doing your first oils with, no doubt about it. Uh, let's see, so, uh, found a nice, well, let me catch up here at Landris, do a mostly set up, almost everything is where it belongs. I got another cabinet on the way, and the FDM printer is already up and running. Boy, Landris, I'm telling you, I'm gonna have to, uh, I'm gonna have to trade just some minis for, uh, for some of that elven terrain, because there's no way I'm ever printing that out here. I'll just have to trade just some minis for some terrain. That's for sure. Uh, let's see, I was going to head the gang over tomorrow night for some Stargrave. We got sick earlier in the week. Ah, so best of way. Ah, sorry, Landress, you won't be able to do uh, do that get-together. I'm sure, actually, you're really kind of wanting to, you know, wanting to have some fun with folks there. Uh, sorry that you won't be able to do that, but like I said, hopefully next week. Let's see, uh, today found a nice variety of miniatures, but the flat areas, that's good. I uh, may attempt some freehand. Uh, so today, uh, I don't know if this will help, but you can't see it, but my elbows are sitting on one of those soft computer thing. What the heck are they? Uh, like armrests, right, for people that get keyboard fatigue. So the elbows are sitting there, right, so my hands are stable. And I'll typically have a miniature in this hand, and then this hand rests on this. So it, it's kind of like basically a tripod, right? So it's uh, a nice stable platform, so to speak. Yeah, actually, in land dress, the nice thing is, if it's that elven terrain, that'll fit on camera because it's all modular, right? It's all in pieces. So 
that would be sensational. Now, uh, actually, some of the Gondor stuff, too, is also in sections. So, yeah, we could actually, that would be one way to be able to do some more terrain streams. And we would paint it with the oils, of course, right? Why wouldn't we paint it with the oils? All right, I th think I like that a little bit better. Build up that lighter color a little bit more and cut into that edge just a smidge there. Uh, let's see. So uh, Landrast, the, uh, there's the RM printable terrain. He's got a bunch of Elven stuff. And I've got the uh, from Diwali. That's it. Yes, of all that Diwali terrain. Uh, unless well, unless you've got uh, you say hey look this other stuff is just better. <laughs> uh, th those are just the ones that I know of at least. I'm sure there must be other ones. Uh, so let's see. So trash is oh okay. I think we're all cut up now. Uh, again, sorry that I'm a little bit behind on the chat because of where the camera is. Everything is uh, it's really tough to see anything. It is really tough to see the chat. And that's just kind of, uh, unfortunately, uh, I guess if we had more monitors or something like that. I have two of them, but one of my monitors has my reference pictures. Let's see if we can get our tall grass here. I'm going to throw just a smidge of thinner into that. Yeah, Landris, there's the Diwali terrain. I don't know if they have any Elven stuff. Well, actually, uh, let me look and see, because every month they have new terrain. Oh, well, the other thing, obviously, Landris, is the... Uh, uh, who is it? The uh, printing goes ever on with all the, the Moria stuff. Because that's pretty much all just uh, modular, right? <coughs> hey, Bitteron, how you doing? So, Bithron, I know that, uh, well, you're still still got the crazy hours going there. Uh, thanks for thanks for just saying hi. I know you would love to be able to just kind of hang out and such. I'm going to see if I can't splash a little bit of light right here, right through this area. Right through these guys and... Maybe make them stand out just a bit more. And sort of connect it to the fields right here. And even have that sort of uh, wind its way over here. So we've, we've made a couple of changes to things. Is I didn't feel like I had enough of a, uh, a value contrast here. Ah, well, speaking of which, what happens when we do this now? Interesting. So you don't see all the warm color here. You don't see the cool color there. But there's still some value. You still got plenty of value there. Yeah, Bithron, you're still on the evenings, and I can definitely understand you being tired. Uh, let's see. And, uh, yeah, trash. I'm I'm sure I've seen those. Uh, land dress. Are those, those are the things that I see in battle reports all the time, right? The printable scenery stuff. I mean, I could even just shoot you a, a USB drive with a whole bunch of files on it. And, well, that way you would just have them. Because, I mean, <laughs> why wouldn't you want to print some of those for yourself? And it's not like you have to use them for Lord of the Rings. Uh, you probably wouldn't use them for Marvel Crisis Protocol, but I'm sure heck, probably some of the Gondor buildings, you could use those almost for some historicals. Uh, <laughs> see, we're having some fun here, just holding the brush on its side. Now, this I might also lighten up a smidge. That's our umber. 
All right. Uh, let's see. I wouldn't uh, surprise me. They. Oh yeah. Okay. So yeah, Landress. Just with the. I know. There's just no way. Like we were talking about. I'm not gonna have any time to print stuff for at least a couple of weeks here. So I think what I might just do is uh, is throw as many files on a USB drive uh, as I could. Ah, but printing up files I already own and sending you. Okay. Well, fortunately, at least uh, you know if we're painting it on stream here, we're we're definitely trying to give them the uh, the publicity, right, or the the advertising, for sure. Uh, let's see. Now today wants to see Magneto invading Gondor. Uh, so would that be uh, basically all of the Gondolorians just start flying around because he's just picking them up with their metal armor? Then uh, let me see. Oh, that's why. It's like, how did things get so warm here all of a sudden? It's because my uh, my fan turned off here. Okay, that's better. So not only are we getting a little bit of texture back here, but you say we're kind of killing some edges here and there too. Uh, you yeah, have Landress, uh, well, s speaking of Lord of the Rings, right? Uh, we still kind of feel like, uh, hmm, maybe, maybe they should throw a few pennies this way, right? Or at least some Lord of the Rings miniatures. Or at least, I don't know, maybe the War in Erebor book or War in the North book, whatever the heck they're going to call it. I don't know. I think uh, maybe that's something that should find its way over here too. All right. Now this, I'm just going to change that. Just going to make a change here. Where's my my white here? And we'll cut that mountain down. We'll cut that mountain down to size. Make sure I get a little bit of my brilliant yellow pail. into that yeah let's see if we can maybe do some some clouds here as well since we have this lighter color on there maybe even behind Medjuseld hey acid burn punk how you doing <laughs> it would go well to the first dragon and uh Showed up. Uh, actually, well, I'm, now I'm starting to think about uh, uh, all the the gold. Speaking of Erebor, you got all the gold there, and uh, Magneto would just uh, that would be how Magneto taking all the gold. Uh, Rascal, it's something. Well, let's put it this way. I've had to basically paint and talk at the same time since the 90s because I used to do in-person watercolor demos and pastel demos, especially pastel demos. And then for many years, I've had to do the same thing at conventions. I've even had to do it at Ren Fairs. Yeah. <laughs> the Ren Fair one was probably the most challenging because you had to do it in a 1603 English accent. Like literally, you had to basically perform in that accent, or you got uh, or you got penalized. And I had to try and paint and uh, do that all at the same time. Ah, uh, so today just got a bunch of the Iron Hill dwarves. Uh, well, actually, uh, today we do have now. I've got an army painting series based on the was it the printing goes ever on. There we go. So this is the printing goes ever on. Uh, that was our series 25 there, but we did paint some of these guys on stream. So I think uh, maybe one of those guys was painted on stream. So you can go check those out if you wanted to. I think that was maybe back in uh, November ish, November, December. So yeah, we've uh, the the channel here, I think as you already know, it's 
essentially like a YouTube channel. All, all those past sessions are saved. Here now we're going to try and flatten out some of these clouds way the heck back here. I'm just going to grab me a brush here to use for, whoops, that's not what we wanted. We'll just use something like this. There we go. And we'll have to kill that. Let's go back to our blending brush there. Okay, that's a little bit less of the yellow right there. That was uh, not what we were looking for. Yeah, today, uh, now I think the one disadvantage is maybe there's not the same kind of search function that you would have, say, on YouTube. But you can definitely go back and check those out. There is a, uh, there's a thumbnail. So we always have a thumbnail for each of the vids. And actually, uh, so at Rascal, uh, especially doing something like a landscape like this, it's it's already a nice chill thing. But it's definitely something we've had to do an awful lot. Just uh, and you know you have a whole bunch of people, and you know they're right there with you. You've gotta you gotta keep them uh, involved and interested. I'm going to try and get me some more definition in Eteros here. This is a combination of some of our lighter blues plus some of our greens. Aramina, how you doing? Ah, Grim, right? If the color goes somewhere, it has to go everywhere. It sure did. It, it made its way into the sky. Although I guess it kind of sort of already did with the courtesy of the brilliant yellow pail. Let's see if we can start to create a bit more of a vertical look here. Something that looks a little bit more rocky. Ah, Landry just realized this was Edoras. Well, once we start really working on Medjusel up there, it'll be a, it'll be a lot more clear. I mean. Right now, we're just trying to block in, right? All of the larger shapes, that's what we're interested in. All the big shapes. Plenty of time for the small stuff. We'll have to also figure out what we want to do with that. I see from where I've seen a Middle Earth... Uh, I have switched from large scale games to skirmish games, and actually, uh, so today I I have had a chance to do one or two battle reports. Well, they were they weren't really video battle reports for Lord of the Rings, but that's one of the reasons why I'm doing all of those Lord of the Rings armies, because I do believe that I have. Well, I'm gonna basically do one of every army for Middle Earth strategy battle game. Uh, so Aaron Bino had uh, a little bit of a uh, a revolution <laughs> a revolution in the in the digestive system there. So sorry to hear about that. Those are never fun. Those type of revolutions. Uh, yep, we we always have our reference photos in the corners. I know it can be hard sometimes for people to see those uh, on the phone. I can only imagine how small they must be. I'm pretty sure I couldn't see him on mine. So that that I can definitely understand. Now I'm going to try it uh, again. This is a little bit of the uh, perline black. It's mixed with some of the umber, some of the Van Dyke brown. Uh, let's see. So yeah, Aaron Beanel, it's it's been... It's certainly been an interesting couple of well, it's been an interesting month and a half. That the last two days, though, I have to say we got pretty darn lucky. We could have been far less fortunate 
as far as uh, weather related things go it could have been a whole lot worse than it was so we're grateful for that uh, so the the reference photo on a phone is about the same size as a banner on a six millimeter figure I figured it was something like that and uh, now I think here let me uh, we'll just use something like this here so uh, if you go back and watch the the start of it here and let's uh, do it this way okay so we, we divide it up into these nine nine sections here these are always the places we're looking for our focal points never in the center and you really don't want it off to the sides or too far up or too far down because it's just gonna be boring as all heck so these are always the areas that we target and if you go back and watch the start of this guess what there's a circle here there's a circle right there there's one down here and then there's one over here so we have uh, a few of those areas kinda in those four quadrants that have something of interest in them and that's why we got these guys down here and not in the center or too far off to the side because we at least want to have them right around here and then we've got this up here too uh, and rascal it's it's gonna change of course too over the course of time as we start to develop this more and develop more over here and we get some sharper edges uh, I think I'm just gonna try and get caught up here yeah so war squirtle the what you might call it the battle companies thing is I guess that's interesting because you can for all intents and purposes sort of develop your own heroes uh, it's what is it uh, uh, that the fantasy version I know there's Necromunda uh, what am I thinking of Mordheim or something like that yeah so it's a little bit kinda like Mordheim and that you you're developing your units Ah, uh, you're painting some Moria goblins. Well, we have plenty of those. We have, where's our gobbos here? So these are the printed ones here. These are from uh, the Printing Goes Ever On. Really loved painting these guys. And then, of course, we've got the our Moria army here. So you can go back and watch these streams. We painted all those goblins. We painted the Balrog. And then, of course, where's our dragon here? Where's our Moria dragon? He's around here somewhere. Let me see if I can find him for you. It's it's been a little while here since I've actually had a chance to look at the dragon. He's around somewhere. Well, we'll we'll find. Oh, there he is. So there's our Moria dragon. All right, Grim. Well, thanks so much. And uh, I'll I'll try and check out the video and I'll let you know how that goes. But uh, I wish you all the luck uh, dealing with the school and and all that kind of stuff. Hopefully that goes well and it's not uh, like you say maybe next week it starts to calm down to a low roar and you get some more grim time uh, let me see uh, so oh uh, Wample Edoras has a much deeper cliff on its wet face than uh, actually when you uh, it depends which way you turn this thing because uh or the, the the mountain there also too we're still adding to this yet so yeah it's it's still gonna we're still adding to that but we have to figure out what's going on with our mountains back here first and then we kind of build this over the top of it because that's what's going to create the edge that separates these two so we're basically doing the mountain cutting away at this and then we're going to build it out this way because we can go about out to here or so. Oh, thanks, Grumdy. I appreciate that. Oh, well, sorry, I have to. Sorry, I have to head out. Uh, now we might have to. We might have to paint some more of these. Uh, these stupid rose knights here. So don't be surprised if I have to paint some of these tomorrow. Unfortunately, it just uh, just has to be done. Uh, Aaron Bano. I do not have the resin smaug, but uh, what I'm hoping to do, well, I was hoping with the Sonic Mini 4K was to print out, was it Diwali has basically their version of smaug? 
but we will not be getting the GW one because, well, that's a nasty, 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 even if it wasn't, what, 400 bucks or whatever it was, it's just a garbage Forge World resin, and it's really hard to put together, and just uh, those who have suffered through it really regret it. So we won't uh, we won't be doing uh, their smog, but we have other options for smog, and we'll try and take advantage of some of those. So now I'm trying to figure out exactly where do we want some of our smaller buildings to go. But thanks so much, Grumdy, for the bitses. You know how you know that is uh, always a really big help. And even some of these, we might have to go back and soften some of the edges. We might have to lighten some roof lines. That's why we just block all this stuff in, right? We block it in first and then build up any kind of details later. Just like up here, we need to uh, create a little bit more shape in all of this. Uh, let's see, so now as far as putting some of that stuff together goes, I will use the glue, green stuff glue trick where you have basically glue on one piece, glue on another, you have a, a basically a ball of green stuff in between those and when you push the two pieces together it sandwiches the green stuff in there and that offers you a whole lot more hold because now those two pieces that didn't want to fit together well you've got green stuff in between them alright now we've got that leveled out a little bit more now, I, uh, Pendrick how have you been doing uh, sorry that uh, wasn't able to ask you that earlier hopefully you're doing good Actually, uh, Pendrick, what kind of stuff have you been working on the last couple of weeks? Uh, so, yeah, we did. Oh, and uh, again, Saturday, hopefully we'll get a chance to do more of these guys. I got five more of them. We'll just try and uh, zap those things out on Saturday. It's a little bit like where's our, you know, when we do our Minas Tirith with all the TMM. Uh, yeah, that uh, that bugger is wow. I mean, once it's all painted, I suppose you know it it does look okay. But <laughs> you have to survive that putting that thing together and dealing with all that sort of a uh, that hassle. All right, we still have some of our sky blue in this. Yeah, it's something. Actually, I have a video on the YouTube channel about that. Now, that's with metal miniatures, uh, not resin figures, but, well, it's the same idea, right? Because metal pieces, um, just like here, uh, Alex, the old, the cave troll right there, there's no way to pin any of this stuff. No way to pin that, and because it's a 20-year-old cast, it, none of this stuff actually fits together at all. So that's what I had to do, was essentially uh, take the, the green stuff, and sandwich that in between uh, two bits of glue. Uh, let's see, it's Pendrick, uh, not so well. Uh, sorry to hear that, Pendrick. Now, that's is that uh, that's not like a, a, a massive uh, seasonal allergy thing, or is that just uh, something new that just kind of popped up? Or hopefully, uh, hopefully it's not anything more like a, a super serious thing. If it is, I, I'm sorry to hear that. Although I guess uh, you know if, if the Reapercon thing doesn't happen, well maybe you can try doing Adepticon next year, because with all the all the craziness going on, and the uh, uh, conventions might be, eh, maybe it's something you just wait on a little bit. 
because I, I just I feel bad because I think there's a lot of folks that think ReaperCon is just going to be like a regular ReaperCon, and it's uh, unfortunately not going to be. All right, here, let's uh, start to get some of our lighter, maybe, roof lines in here, other buildings. Let's get the top of the cliff's edge here, right where that building is. And I guess there's a couple of, well, apparently maybe there's a couple other buildings on that side over there, but we'll wait on that for now. Uh, something old that's getting worse. Ah, sorry to hear about that, Pendrake. Ah, Sibstorm, how you doing? Uh, well, Sibstorm, uh, basically the, the chief thing is that people can barely hear me, and uh, believe me, I've done enough ReaperCons to know that people can barely hear me even when they're right next to me with no mask. And having to shout over things with a mask there's just no way because <laughs> when i have a mask on you literally cannot you could stand right next to me and not be able to hear a word i'm saying which means i basically couldn't do a fort wapple thing anyways so i was kind of hoping that reaper would just stay with the virtual formula for this year and just kind of go well we've had so much success with that let's stick with that for now and then when we know things aren't going to be weird, maybe then we can just have a regular old ReaperCon. And unfortunately, they didn't choose that. I was uh, most surprised since they pretty much set the standard for virtual conventions. That they didn't just kind of at least continue with that just for one more year. Now, and Sibstorm uh, has hearing loss for working with on aircraft. So Misco Blood, how are you doing? Thanks so much for joining joining us here. I have to say that is one thing that I do like that Twitch has included now is the uh is that first time chat cuz that's uh, always nice to know when somebody is new. So Misco Blood, nice to see you. Now I think they were talking about having a virtual element maybe but it just it was again that was I was not expecting them to say yeah we're gonna go do the whole thing like normal I said wait a what I said, oh, well you can do that that's fine uh, we will not be there <laughs> unless unless they hook me up with a Mr. Microphone, which seriously, all kidding aside, we were, I was wondering, is there like a modern day version of Mr. Microphone that I can use at conventions, like to drown out all the noise around me? Because, I mean, if they had Mr. Microphone in the 1970s, they must have some kind of really nifty thing now. <laughs> Uh, so, Bisco, uh, they get welcome in here. We're just going to have some some nice fun with our landscapes in Middle Earth. We'll just uh, get Gandalf's little staff here now. And we've got our Gimli over here with, uh, there's our Gimli. A bow right here, and then your... Legolas, then we've got our Aragorn over here. Who oh that must be a quiver. And then uh, that cloak coming out this way. We may have to move him over a little bit more. So I might do a, a lighter zone in between them here to separate them a bit. Yeah, we'll, we'll separate these guys here. Something like that. Uh, let's see. Hey, Shiza, how you doing? 
Yeah, Sibstorm, uh, what was it? Uh, hey, baby, see you again later or something like that. Remember the guy would be in the car and the car is driving away? So, Shaza, nice to see you again. Uh, here, I'm going to go with a little bit more of my light umber here. And I, oh, the other thing I got to do, I have to, uh, I got to snap a quick image here because we don't want to, I don't want to get too far along here. Let's snap a little picture now that we've got this kind of developed here with the our guys on the horses and Edoras starting to look more like Edoras. Uh, let's see. Uh, TBL says that their local store just started hosting games again. So a little uh, a Sigmar League. Uh, trying to decide if I want to run Nurgle or Daughters of Cain. Uh, well, uh, TBL Hobbies. Now, of course, uh, they don't look quite like these guys. I actually, kind of like the new ones a little bit better. But now this is for Warcry. But uh, they, no, these aren't Daughters of Cain. No, that's the... Oh, I know what that is. That's the... Never mind. I actually did do a painting series on them. Uh, boy, uh, Shaza. Uh, of course, since my chat kind of keeps getting hidden by, by the camera and such, I thought you said bleached killer whales. And I'm thinking, wow, things are really getting crazy in Alaska if they're bleaching killer whales. Uh, all kidding aside, that's what I... That's what I thought you said was bleached killer whales. Ah, so you can use them. Uh, Pendrake, uh, yeah, unless you were a kid in the 1970s, you probably weren't going to remember Mr. Microphone. <laughs> J just do a quick Google search or do a YouTube search. I'm pretty sure that the uh, Mr. Microphone commercial, you could probably find that on YouTube. You'll you'll get you'll certainly get a laugh out of it. I don't even know if it's something. Well, they certainly wouldn't do advertising like that today. That's for sure. Uh, yeah, you really you wouldn't uh, wouldn't be advertising it the same way. All right, here's uh, let's get our shadow facts over here, and it. Yeah, it looks like a dry brush, but we're again we're starting to develop some of these areas here. Oh, thanks, Pendrake. Yeah, I just finished painting a another video series on those guys. We tried a little something different. We tried the Armored Wolf crushed glass with the heavy gloss gel to see if we could make our usual snow effects, and that really worked out well. Hey, Misko. Uh, well, definitely uh, glad that everything, <laughs> we kind of survived all the craziness last night, and I'm able to just enjoy a little bit of landscape painting here. Uh, I wish I, I kind of wish I had the printer going right now so that I could be printing stuff out while we're doing all the fun uh, landscapes like this, but... Well, we'll just uh, we'll have to get the printing figured out at another point. And of course, uh, just being able to paint these landscapes is so much fun. I really do love this. Uh, see, there's the quake called a huge tidal shift, and a killer whale washed ashore from it, but he was able to swim away when the tide rose back up. So I'm glad that he was able to swim away before he got bleached. Uh, so I just. Now I can't unsee that. Ah, Shaza just bought a 4K printer. So Shaza, was that the, was it Anycubic, Frozen, Elegoo? Those, those are the big three, right? Anycubic, Frozen, and Elegoo. I, I'm sure there's other ones. Those are just the ones that come to mind. Uh, so, Misko, we had uh, super massive storms come through this way. There was parts of the city that were getting hit with 75-mile-an-hour winds. And actually, the last two, and of course, it was overnight. So, this is uh, basically 3.30 in the morning. I'm essentially just 
I had to turn off all the machines in the house and just kind of look out the window just to see if stuff was going to start falling down. And uh, pretty much the last two overnights have been exactly like that. Uh, which is very disruptive to getting any work done because, uh, well, it's really hard to film things when the computer is not on. That's for sure. Uh, so is the Mars 3 from Elegoo. It's on pre-sale right now until August 1st. Comes with lots of freebies. Well, that's really cool, Shaza. Now, uh, do you already have a bunch of uh, Patreons all lined up? Uh, actually, Misko, this is the normal time for the Thursday stream. Uh, it should be starting somewhere between 11.30 and 11.35 Central Time. It's been the last month or so with the insane weather where I just have not been able to start it at this time or yet, not even do Thursdays. Uh, then the other one, oh, that was, uh, that was Twitch with all the craziness. So it, there's just been, it's been nuts. We'll just, uh, we'll, we'll do it the short way. It's been extra crazy. Just uh, pretty much since June all the way through July here. It's been kind of uh, one thing after another. I'm going to darken this down a little bit here and then mix that. And yes, I can use my finger. Ah, uh, the, the hill becomes a mountain for Shaza. Plenty of gray shame. Well, uh, now, of course, Shaza, you could use the the Soraya Smoky Black Simple, and you could have a Smoky Black pile of shame, too. You could vary the colors of your piles of shame. Uh, so, Misko, uh, the Monday and Friday streams, those are supposed to, if, if everything is going according to plan, those are supposed to start somewhere around 6.35 my time. And then the Saturday stream, ideally, that would begin somewhere around 4.30ish or so my time. Uh, unfortunately, it just uh, it hasn't been able to work out that way the last uh, month or so. And for the longest time, we were able to pretty much keep to that schedule. And then, well, the weather's been pretty crazy for just about everybody. And there's uh, actually people that have had to deal with uh, much worse than I have. That's for sure. I'm going to see if I can get some lighter stuff behind this wall here now so that the wall maybe starts to show up. Ah, uh, yes. The, but, Aaron it's uh it's interesting. Obviously, most people, they think of Bob Ross. But for me, I always think of Bill Alexander. That's that's always been, I mean, it, you know, love me some Bob Ross. He's really cool and all that. But, uh, yeah, Bill Alexander, he's always been, he's always going to be that guy for me. Uh, so Shaza, actually, now Shaza, if you just prime it different colors, you know, you prime some of the darker stuff, maybe a dark green or whatever on the bottom. And then as it gets towards the top of your pile of shame, you start to prime it maybe some bluish white or something like that. Uh, it'll actually look like a mountain. So you could do something like that and, and just uh, make it look like an actual mountain. I'm going to lighten this area up a smidge more, I think, yeah. But you can see it's, it's mixing with all the colors that are underneath there already. Now I need to start cutting some more shapes into this. I, I will use a little bit of thinner here and there. And let's go some lighter things over here and then a couple up there too. So say we all! So say we all! Uh, thank you so much. Uh, well, I can see the cute, but I'm trying to read. And thank you so much for that sub. I appreciate that. Uh, Peach, uh, 
fear the cute i'm almost thinking that's a that's like a p h e a r thank you so much for that sub uh if you want to give me uh, a few clues as to if i didn't pronounce that correctly uh, feel free to just say hey wait a minute it's supposed to be pronounced this way and that's all good because uh we want to make sure people get their name pronounced correctly hey takarot nice to see you Ah, uh, Takaroth, that's interesting. Uh, I think you were in when I was telling you about that other person that just got their printer, which is hilarious that he's printing and I'm not able to right now. But he's been uh, using the water washable resin from the start, and he said that that was working okay. He, he, now, of course, he's he's new to the printing, and he says, well, you know, I'm new to this, but it seems to be working okay which is good news because I actually do have a bottle of that stuff. I had bought it just just to try it out. Not a big bottle. It's kind of a smaller one. But I'll definitely have to give it a shot, right? All right, time to lighten this area up just a little bit more here. Uh, yep, she's at well. <laughs> she's going to have to wait a long time. Because the printing backlog, uh, just with the, between weather craziness and right now, I basically have two printers that are inactive. She'll have to wait a little while before that happens. Oh, let's see, you got the large clear blue to try that out. Yeah, and the other thing now, uh, Shaza, in any case, I was waiting until I got the. Uh, was that that frozen mini 4k going because i don't think the elegoo mars would have been uh would have worked for that file well any of those right because uh what were you printing did you print yours eight inches or something like that i think it was I i'm sorry i forgot i know you told me i just don't remember what size you printed that at now i'm going to get me some where's my terra rosa here Terra Rosa, a little bit of the umber. And now I'm going to see if I can't start doing things like the towers and the gates and, and some of the stuff on the walls here. Because if I make that a cooler color, well, that's going to recede. We don't want that to recede. So we're starting to use the warmer color here. And this is by no means the lightest color that we can put here. We can certainly go lighter than that. But they're a warm color there. Now we start to have a bit of a wall here. Uh, Misco, uh, whenever anybody does some bits or cheers or something like that, we well, we do a cheer. We do a cheer for a cheers. Now, uh, I don't usually drink too much during the stream. <laughs> I, I wish it could be tea, because love me some tea, right? But un unfortunately, tea puts the stream in streaming, which is uh, still one of my favorite things to say, which I shouldn't enjoy saying that quite so much, but I really do. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, actually, I'm going to go back and see... Uh, I just want to see what, uh, I have lots of sympathy for orcas. Uh, from a draw along with another streamer, David Peterson, he calls the event Draw the Extinct. Uh, actually, hey, Pendrick, if you got a, uh, if you got uh, any Instagram links or something like that to what you did in that, uh, feel free to post that if you wanted to, because uh, that could be fun for people to see. Here we go. Let's uh now we can start to think about lightening that up. Well we have we have fluids here. We've got liquids that we can that we can access. Alright, now I'm gonna really I think hit some of these 
areas of the Palisade. Again, I can still go lighter, but we're not going to go too light too quickly here. Then we also have the gate right here. Separate that Palisade from the rock underneath. Yeah, Landrasta. Uh, well, <laughs> Uh, I keep thinking of, oh, what the heck, uh, Armored Wolf, what was the place near the abandoned strip mall where Reprecon used to be? Oh, the Electric Cowboy, remember remember that? Yeah, the that's when you know you're at a really quality uh, location right there, when you've got the Electric Cowboy just a few doors away. Uh, let's see. So the boots will give it another one to two inches. Well, Shaza, you know, I guess uh, with that uh, with that particular sculpt, another one to two inches. I guess you're not asking too much from it, right? So to speak. I got, but it's still probably measured in millimeters, anyways. Also, a little channel from Reapers Discord. Oh, and I guess, uh, now, Shays, I think you heard the news that Kathy is going to start streaming as Kathy. She won't be streaming as more than Dice anymore. So, yeah, well, she's, she's going to be streaming as herself from now on, which I know that's something that she's been really, really thinking about for quite a while. So now she'll finally get a chance to do that. I don't know exactly when that will be. It could maybe be as early as next week. Uh, don't hold me to that. Yeah, Misko, she's been really thinking about that for quite a while. And uh, I think it'll be fun because now she can have her own... You know, speaking of those uh, challenges, right, or uh, redeems, she can have her own redeem stuff instead of you know, whatever it is that they're doing as a group with more than dice. Ah, and there we go. Pendrake has uh, been able to find the Discord link. So if everybody wants to check that out, that would be sensational. Yeah, I, uh, now it, it's going to mean a little bit of work. It's going to mean a little bit of work getting her stuff set up and then she's going to have to obviously start posting places and everything else. So there's going to be a little work that's uh, involved with that. But hopefully uh, that that's going to end up being fun for her. All right, I'm just going to tone down the that line right there. And I'm also going to come back in here and tone down some of these. We don't need those edges to be quite so sharp. At least not just yet. Yeah, Misko, uh, I'm glad that you guys have been, all of you guys have been pretty much saying, hey, look, yeah, you should do your own thing. You should do your own thing. And because all of you guys, you know, you said that, it sort of gave her the, oh, what would you say, kind of the, the, the confidence to feel that people would follow her, right, and it would be worth doing that. So thanks, uh, thanks so much for giving her those words of encouragement because she she wanted to, but then she would think, well, I don't know, is anybody really going to care? I mean, should I even bother with this? But every single time I just said, well, hey, haven't they all been telling you that they, you know, they want you to just uh, be there as Kathy? Uh, let's see. So, yeah, Misko, uh, we were trying to think of some uh, some fun stuff. Obviously, I would love to have her, well, since this is, it's still technically Wapleville here, I would love to see her have some uh, puppet show challenges, you know, or something like that. Now, of course, if she's doing oil, she's not going to be able to do much with that because... Uh, she would have paint all over her hands. But she does have tea, and she also has her stream sauce, so 
She has ample things that she can hydrate with. I'm going to continue. Ooh, yeah, adding a little bit more of my light tone. So all of a sudden now, this starts to have more of a base to it, right? It's not, uh, it's not a floating mountain anymore. And hopefully this is starting to look a little bit more like a palisade too. Well, technically, yeah, she has three different things. Uh, she has water, she has tea, and she has her stream sauce. So she should have plenty of selection, right? There should be plenty to select from. Uh, here, let's uh, do more with our gate there. And then maybe we do something out here. This roof right here, maybe. See if we can get a couple of Rohani looking roofs here. Maybe we'll lighten this up just a smidge there. And let's see if we can capture a couple of the towers on the side there. And we'll just knock this down like so. Now, I, uh, the other thing, too, maybe she'll be able to, I don't know, maybe she might, uh, I don't know if she's going to try and try and stream on different days or whatever, but I just feel like, uh, yeah, if she wants to just do reading streams all week or something like that, she can maybe feel like just doing reading streams all week long instead of just on Fridays. Uh, I think the other thing, too, is that while well, she could have her read a chapter thing uh, and maybe reduce the amount of points so that it doesn't take quite so many points to get to the read a chapter thing. So a uh, color temperature means a lot here, right? Watch what happens when we go zoink. Yeah, you got the, all the light and darks, but you don't have kind of the reddish colors here, the yellows here. This in the sky, almost the same. Well, it was very much like this one, right? That uh, that mountain on the right-hand side looked just like the sky until the color returned. Yeah, she really loves reading on screen. Well, she just uh, she likes doing the reading thing. I think no matter what, but especially uh, on stream, right? Because you guys, uh, she can react with you guys. Uh, especially depends on how many supples there are. Ah, uh, that that's it, uh, Misko. She's gonna have to have some kind of uh, some kind of a gif or whatever that really does count up all the different supples, or people can uh, maybe have her inject the word supple into whatever she's saying. Like we're just gonna apply a a supple dark right here, and it's the supple form of detail up here on the. Here we've got the the supple great hall of Medjusel. So she could just have to uh, insert that word as many times into as many sentences as possible. No, I, again, I don't know what kind of a gif or whatever thing she would she would want to have for that particular chat point reward, but. Uh, and I'm not even really sure if I should refer to him as that, but that's what I do. All right, so I'll put a couple of more buildings over there. I'm going to reinforce a couple of darks over here, too, on our hill as this comes down. I think I can darken this down now too, maybe because and warm it up because we've got our mountain behind it here. And see how that starts to again shoots that mountain towards the background. Oh, thanks, Misko. Appreciate that. Yeah, until 
uh, I had a chance to start doing these landscapes the last time I'd been able to paint any sort of landscape in oil paints was way, way, way back in the day. And I don't even think, well, I, there is. Technically, there is a landscape here. Yes. Where's Ah, here we go. So this is some of the 2D art that we used to do. So there's a watercolor and hot press watercolor board, same as this one here. Now we're getting a couple of our pastels. And there's some wolves right there. I think this is just regular acrylics. Oh, this is the other thing I want to paint too, is some spacecapes, because I love spacecapes. Now this is an oil painting I did. I was, what, 13 when I did that one? Wish I knew then what I know now. So we're going to go back to a couple of more uh, watercolors on hot press watercolor board. And then there's this one. So that is actually a terraformed Mars. That is the city of Tharsis right there with the Mount Olympus in the background. So that was a very fun, uh, very fun landscape right there. Actually, where's my other landscapes that we did before here? Come on, where are they at? There you are. So these are actually the first two that we did, the Minas Morgul and Mordor. Yeah, Misko actually have several paintings from way back in the day that were actually signed by some of the B5 cast members. I've got one I know from Peter Jurisic, and I have another one from Mira Ferlan. I know at one point we were thinking about doing uh, some B5 oil paintings, uh, especially with, well, since very few are still around, sadly, uh, especially after Mira for land, I don't know. I might have to. I might have to do that Jakar and Lando in oils or something like that. Uh, well, B five. That was that was my favorite show. I really Hello, really Lord. enjoyed it's that. Spark my ganja. <laughs> Miss Gil, thank you so much. Hello, little. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Um, Shadow Facts, I think that's you. Uh, I can't tell because it's just your butt, but I think that's you. He can sniff it, and he recognizes that as his own butt. Not sure how he could reach that, but I guess he can. So, I like so much, Misko. So, yeah, we figured uh, once we can get, uh, you know, lots of shout-outs for Kathy, and she gets uh, used to uh, streaming on her own there. I think she's going to have some fun. I'm going to have to get some, I think, some lighter gray on his hair. Yeah, Miss Go I just, I really enjoyed it. The fact that the humans were not the masters of the universe, that they were, they were one of the little guys, pretty much. And per, by rights, should have been wiped out by the Mimbari. I just that was a, a really fascinating thing. Uh, this notion that all of these other races were as powerful, if not more powerful, than the humans. And you had uh, well, characters would kind of develop and change, right? Lando and Jakar, especially. And characters uh, didn't always make it. If you weren't quite sure, you couldn't just say, ah, of course they're going to survive till the end of the episode. You never really knew with B5. Ah, uh, yeah, Misko, I, I think I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to do a painting of Jakar. I did at least, at least three paintings of Jakar. I think I did probably about three, four of Delenn. Uh, I did one painting of uh, Ivanova and Bester. So Bester was kind of a shadowy thing in the background, that shadowy form. All right, there's our Medjuseld up there. Now let's see if we can uh, uh, separate Gimli here from Legolas. Like so. Let's 
So yeah, uh, Lando was uh, he was really uh, great because he was he was basically a buffoon, right? I mean, he was, and that was what motivated him, was that uh, basically Centauri had become a a theme park pretty much, and he was just a laughing stock. And that was the the weakness that the shadows used. Now we don't want to do spoilers, I suppose. But uh, I remember the the one speech by uh, by a Jakar when he's talking about the shadows and the Vorlons, and he says that he's pointing to those ants crawling around on a plant. And he says that there there's creatures in the universe that basically look at us the way we look at those ants crawling around on this plant here. And he's and he says they have no way to communicate with us any more than we have to communicate with those ants. All right, Aaron Banel, thank you so much for uh, for hanging out as long as you could. I appreciate that. And hopefully we see you well tomorrow and or Saturday. So Jakar, he was right here. Uh, let's just scroll back up here. So that is the guy on the left side there. So Lando is your Centauri. And Jakar was one of the Narn. And uh, that's the, the Book of Jaquan. And you can see the shadow, the shadow ship behind him there. Of course, one one of my favorite scenes. It's just a little throwaway scene at the end of an episode, when when Jakar, uh, they they start to basically worship him as a prophet, pretty much, and they want to read from the book of Jakar. And he he kind of just tells that one guy here, look, uh, you want to learn wisdom? Get a little closer. Get your get your head down in that book. Look closer. Look closer. And then the, it cuts away to outside the uh, outside the room, and you just hear the book close on the guy's head. So Aaron Banel, thanks again for for hanging out. I appreciate that. And of course, well, uh, Delin definitely another favorite. Now there were some episodes of mine that were. That were favorites. That weren't necessarily the ones that uh, most most folks chose. Yeah, let's get a little bit more of this. And of course, uh, just the other day, I was thinking about Penn and Teller because they were the comedians. Uh, was it Zoot and Zooty? I think were their uh, that was their names. Yeah, good old Zoot and Zooty. At least I think that's what they were that's what they were called. And I'm pretty sure that uh the only time anybody's ever heard I don't know which one is the one, I think it's Teller who doesn't talk. He actually does talk at one point to uh to Sheridan, I think. Uh, oh yeah, that was uh, ah, that was it was really fun seeing those guys. I did actually get to meet well because we did the convention scene. That's that's where I was selling things. Okay, there's our Gimli. Let's get to our Aragorn right here. Again, the lights and darks on that cloak. Uh, maybe some something besides just all the dark green there. So start think about Legolas and what his uh, shape of his head's going to be. Uh, let's see. All right. 
Uh, do we need to? Yeah, let's see if we can get a... That's almost more like it says a hood there. Looks like, oh, uh, Legolas also has a quiver. So a quiver and the bow. Let's uh, make that bow stand out a little bit more. We got some Van Dyke brown here for Aragorn's head. Uh, again, I think that's just going to be a quiver or something. Some equipment for his horse. Back over here to some of our green. Boy, that's it's interesting. It doesn't look terribly dark on the palette, but everything is relative. This is why when we're when we're painting miniatures, we work on the whole thing all at once, right? Just for this very same reason. Why? Because if you're working on only one small part of it at any one time, you're gonna then you go do something else, you're going to say, wow, that looks really, really light all of a sudden. Or, man, I thought that was dark. That's not very dark. And that is a consequence of not working on everything all at the same time. Who enters my domain? That looky here. Looky here, boy, a steep T. Well, I know you're, you're stuck pretty much by an ad wall right now. But steep T, how are you doing? Steep T, everybody please give Steep T a follow. How the heck are you doing? Uh, the Dork Ninjas, how you doing there? Boy, Steep T, uh, it's nice to see you. I hope that you've been doing okay out there. Uh, sorry that uh, I, I sometimes get the notifications, but boy, it's been a crazy last couple of months. Uh, at Steep T, now did you finish off your, uh, oh God, that Lumineth? Cause that was one of the, yeah that was Illumineth. no no that was uh, that was one of the elves that's right uh, steep tea if you want to uh, to throw your Instagram link to that elf that you were working on with uh, I think he was a musician right yeah he was a mu musician um, definitely uh, post a link to that ah uh, look at that war squirtle showing allegiance to Rohan so yeah steep tea we've been working on lots of landscapes of Middle Earth. Uh, this is the one that we did last week with the Argonoth. And, well, here's our here's our Lonely Mountain. And then, of course, uh, several weeks ago, we did Mordor and we did Minas Morgul. So we're, we're focusing, we're doing 2D, right? It's a little bit flatter than your average miniature, but the ideas or the principles are all the same, right? Ah, but Steep T, thanks so, thanks so much for hanging out, uh, Actually, I saw you go live, and I was thinking, oh, man, because I was, you know, getting everything ready for this, and I was really wanting to hang out and say hi. But, though, thanks thanks for coming here, because now I can actually say hi. It's one thing to type it. Now I can actually say it. Ah, uh, so definitely, uh, now, Steep T, uh, yeah, if you want to, uh, I know you've got several Instagram posts on uh, on that one that you are working on, so definitely show people that, and... Now, uh, if you got, what are you doing uh, on the new project side of things? Since I'm uh, pretty sure you have that one finished. Uh, what were you? What have you been working on the last few weeks? I also got some photos from the night and the elf. Wow, that's great. Well, we'll we'll be here. We'll be here waiting. So again, just having so much fun here, uh, playing around with. I just I really enjoy these oil paints. It's it's whether it's miniatures, whether it's landscapes, there's just something about the oils. Now, it's not like I would hate doing these in acrylics, but something a little extra special about the oil paints. Ah, so you're picking back up Tricky Ricky from Blood Carrot Nights and he'll be doing it in a week or two. Ah, Steep Tea, I think you'll enjoy it. Oh, and Steep Tea. One of the reasons we're kinda doing this we're getting people kind of prepared for the time when I start doing uh, some painted backdrops for dioramas, for for uh, for uh, vignettes and such. So that's the other thing we're kind of getting people prepared for is when we uh, do some of those. 
and boy that that's going to be really fun getting a chance to do some some dioramas all right what i'm hoping to do is have this cut into this a little bit more we don't i don't want to have these two shapes like this so what i might just do is have this come up this way more there we go yeah raise this up here so now that okay feel a little bit more more comfortable with that and again we're raising the level of this up so that that can be more of a dark shape behind it I'm gonna grab some of my here's my terra rosa here Ah, there we go. Also, too, the type of brush draw, you can see, look at See how little paint there is on that brush? It's just as if we were painting miniatures. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, using the, the 2D stuff as a, like a painted backdrop for a miniature or something like that, I think you could have a lot of fun with that. All right, I'm going to see if I can again, put more of my grass texture in here. There we go. So they look like they're actually in some grass instead of just like, wait a minute, <laughs> floating around in midair. I think I'm going to make this a little darker here, this edge. Yeah. Heck, maybe I'm even going to start using my fingers sometimes to blend things. We used to do that all the time with the acrylics. I just don't do that so much with the oils because I have to handle miniatures. At least with the, the acrylics, obviously any paint that's on my hand will be already dry, so I wouldn't have to worry about that transferring onto miniatures. But even out here, I have to start to break this up just a little bit. And then I can soften that up with, I mean, it's already, it's got paint on it, yes, but still acts a little bit like a blending brush. Look at that. Now, of course, uh, well, I guess they, they, they had passed through Moria, but one of the things that land, uh, everybody was trying to avoid you would think that would be a balrog or something like that right you think well that's really scary i don't want to see that not in moria no siree yeah here's something you want to see way less Th these guys those are the mimes of moria yes they are french and yes they are mimes jete moi that says toss me and uh there we says says we love the mimes yes they have a fleur de lis they also have baguettes, they have top hats, they have berets, and they even have chef's hats. Look at that, look at that, safety first, right? You're not gonna grab that hot baguette out of the oven without an oven mitt. And there's one of your goblins with an oven mitt. And look at Charles de Gaulle. He's only a two-star general, but he's got a mighty fine mustache. And then of course you got Francois and Pierre. Now these guys, they were convinced they were the stars of the team. They didn't do any of the blocking or tackling or hitting or anything like that. But, you know, Pinot Noir, Fine Chablis, they were all over that. Now, this is a team that I did back in, what was it, 2006? Wow, it's hard to think it's been that long ago. But, yeah, 2006 we did these guys, and they were all metal. So I had to literally hack pieces of these guys away with clippers and saws and then try and do some re-sculpting. Like here, the hand that's holding that wine glass, that was a closed fist. I had to chop that open, pry the fingers apart, and then do some uh, some green stuff to fill those out. Yes, the, the mimes of Moria. Uh, their their re-roll counters were cheese wheels. That was that was their re-roll counters. And of course, you know, that was also part of their hospitality f uh, funds there for the uh, for the refs so that they could maybe uh, maybe bribe them. 
and their uh, war squirtle, there's definitely older and more foul things, right? I think that uh, those gobos pretty much qualified for that. And people were terrified of the goblin toss. They were absolutely terrified of the goblin toss. Uh, release the baguette. Yes. Boy, in every field, uh, especially, well, cheese curds, which, well, we're going to be tearing through all those cheese curds. Those are going to be pretty much gone in a day or two, I think, sadly. Uh, so flight sim, all of those were acrylics. I didn't really think of using the oils for miniatures until about five years ago yeah actually it was uh we're actually come, we're getting on to the five year anniversary of me using oils on miniatures yeah i still have one of the very first ones over here actually i did this in a facebook live i think you can still see the m18 here that we did with the oils and a whole bunch of the I know we did a Churchill. I'm pretty sure I did an M4. Now, bag it could be a, a dangerous weapon, that's for sure. All right, Steep T, thank you so much for uh, hanging out with us, and thank you so much for the raid. That is appreciated. And actually, oh, Steep T, when would your next stream be? Because then I can kind of uh, try and keep out a, a lookout for it. And again, if everybody could please give Steep T a follow, if you haven't already done so, if you could please do that, that would be sensational. Uh, let me see. So uh, uh, today, one of my favorite history uh, is military history visualized. And every so often, usually around April Fools, he would do <laughs> he would do a really crazy episode. And the, there was one that he called the Baguette Verfer, and it was a special weapon. And it, it, he basically treated it just like it was a regular, it could have been a Hano Mag, it could have been a Panzer IV, it could have been just about anything. But yeah, it was, uh, look, military history, not vi or mystery, military history visualized, and look up the Baguette Verfer. And it talked about how you know the the Germans they tried to recreate that weapon, but they weren't able to get the crispy uh, the crispy bread the same way it was just uh, it was this very nasty hard black bread. But then of course you know a certain individual kept interfering with the development of it the entire time. So the the baguette verfer was not uh, it wasn't ready for deployment in time. Uh, let's see, so uh, next team stream is going to be Tuesday, August 3rd at 7 p.m. Pacific. So that's probably going to be 9 for me. So everybody, please catch Steep Tea the next time around. You'll you'll really enjoy it. Uh, Steep Tea is a very fun streamer. You'll just have a blast. I know he did. Well, let's put it this way. Kathy has no interest in listening to any of those kind of things, and she listened to the entire thing and was laughing almost the entire time. So I think that might also uh, again, it's you don't have to know anything about it to be able to enjoy it. That's for sure. Ah, no, I don't want that to be just a solid mass of dark along the edge there. Nope, not going to do that. I am, however, going to continue to work on a couple of these clumps here. Don't want to... Ah, maybe might even make the... Not just darker, but maybe try and even attach these guys together here. Maybe try and link these up in a subtle way. So they get this comes forward and all this recedes. Got to do something about this here. I'm going to maybe go lighter with that. Don't know why. I've uh, got some of the Indian yellow. And the, some of the white here. And we might just lighten this up a bit. 
Yeah. Yeah, so flight sim, the the tabletop air airlines. Uh, hopefully they'll uh, you know they'll let us run those Lord of the Rings uh, tournaments on there. They better. And of course, you know we'll be flying to locations like this, right? Uh, I think wasn't that uh, we have several tours. We have all, all kinds of tours available. Tabletop Airlines touring Middle Earth and playing Middle Earth Strategy Battle game, because why not? I've got our. Is it a little bit more light down? I don't want to go too much with that. And then I'm going to also lighten up some more of my foreground shapes here. You can see some of that's still just the original pre a lot of this stuff. And we'll we'll just call it the pre-glaze. It's not necessarily quite the same as a miniature because we weren't wiping it away, but the idea is still very much the same. Now I'm going to see if I can. Just a couple of uh, right here. So a more well-defined. Ah, there we are. to these guys again and even trying to think about yeah you know, is the wind kind of knocking some of these over a little bit uh, making them a little bit uh, wind blown and also kind of pointing you in certain directions but even here I have to break up this, I can't just all be this dark right at the edge of the board here. Again, using a little bit of thinner. Sometimes you got to do that to make the paint flow the way you'd like it to. Again, the, we're bringing you forward, setting this back. I might try to find a couple of lights here on the palisade. I did take a little bit of my Terra Rosa just to make sure I didn't lose the that kind of a bit of a reddish tone to it. And might try to emphasize the gate a little bit more there. And then the stone part of the wall. A little bit of a light edge there. But then it's got to only catch a little bit of a light as we go this way. Because if this is the same as that, there's no, there won't be any turn in this this wall here. Like this is in shadow, this is catching the light. We have to keep that going. Uh, oh, thank you so much, uh, Tusuant. I appreciate that. And welcome, welcome to the chat. I hope that you're doing well. And uh, well, it's Tuesday. No, sorry, it's it's Friday here. I can say Happy Friday now. Yeah, I thought somehow I thought this was uh, my Monday stream, but no, we wouldn't be starting this late. We might be going this late, but we wouldn't be starting as late as we have. So this is part of our landscapes of Middle Earth. Last week we were doing the Argonoth, and now this is a regular tutorial video that I did here on the Lonely Mountain. And I think this was June nineteenth when we did a couple of a couple of streams uh, doing Mordor and Minas Morgul. Uh, well, obviously, typically we're uh, <laughs> we usually are doing more of this. And there's uh, there's Shadowfax. It's like, hey, that's me, man. Yeah, that's me in the corner. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Too soon. Uh, and of course, uh, we've done a ton. A, just a ton of our 
Moria army, getting that going, and, well, we don't just do, there's a Gandalf, the fool, yeah, yeah, you think you can, you think you can free say it in? Uh, sorry, we like to do some puppet shows here, too. Some, sometimes we just break out into puppet shows. It happens. Wanna, uh, yeah, what what the heck? I'm going to maybe... Some of the lighter colors here. And, of course, well, we're showing some of the terrain that we did... Uh, so there's some of the painted Rohan buildings that we constructed. There's our tower and blacksmith. There's our windmill, our archery range, the great hall. Well, the not so great hall of Urkenbran. Yeah, and I feel it just wouldn't be the same without the puppet shows, right? Wouldn't be quite the same. I know that uh, I think Big Jim Slade, when he was doing his stream, a couple of weeks ago, he was unboxing some of the Bones 5 stuff, and he was, he was trying to do a couple of puppet shows with the miniatures. I don't know. I think more people should be doing puppet shows. More puppet shows, more better. Hey, Commander Mittens. How the heck are you doing? And if everybody could please give Commander Mittens a follow, that would be sensational. So, Commander Mittens, I hope that you've been doing well. Uh, sorry that I haven't been able to hang out in Dra uh, Drax's streams this week, because I know that's uh, another place where we can usually just uh, say hi to each other. And if everyone could please give Commander Mittens a follow, you won't be disappointed, because Commander Mittens does some really amazing art of all kinds. Uh, actually, speaking of which, Commander Mittens, what is the what kind of stuff have you been working on over the last week or so? Uh, is he doing? Uh, <laughs> I'm doing well aside from the minus minus ten intel. I'm just seeing that as a uh, as a D and D stat there. All of a sudden, I'm just all I see is a D and D stat. I think that's because uh, oh, that's right. We're uh, Big Jim Slade was doing his world building stream the other night. That's why. All right, so I'm gonna get some of the grass here in between these guys. Let's see what I can do for Gandalf here. Yeah, Commander Mittens, I I, I can definitely relate to just uh, <laughs> just being a a blur. That's pretty much been me most of the last uh, month plus or so. So I can definitely see that. I want to see. Can't do something like that for part of Gandalf's staff. Because we can, it's, we still haven't, we're only just now starting to get down to the smaller brushes. And start to put some folds in the cloaks and such here. Ah, Commander Mitten's doing some edge highlighting with the wrong color. Yeah, well, Commander Mitten's, that's what we love about the oil paints, right? There's no mistakes with oil paints. There's just makeup sponges. Or we'll say, oh, yeah, that didn't go so well. And then just uh, wipe that away with ye olde makeup sponge. We kind of did that here. I picked up a brush, and all of a sudden there was a big splurge of uh, Indian yellow there. And I went, wow, that, that just ain't supposed to be there. So we took that, we got rid of it. Now it took you 15 minutes to realize that uh, that definitely <laughs> that does that sound like very much fun at all? No, sir. Mm -mm. 
Uh, well, hopefully it won't be too difficult to uh, correct that. Ah, uh, Mtelly's, how you doing? Uh, Mtelly's, uh, what was the, I saw your Instagram post earlier today. Uh, oh, was there something that arrived? I'm, tr I'm just trying to think. Uh, uh, speaking of brain dead, I can't even remember. It was right there, and then it just escaped me. What might have been in your in your box that that you I think you got today maybe. Now, so M if people could also give M Tellys a follow, that would be great. Here, let's uh, maybe lighten up a little bit of uh, Gimli's cloak here. I thought so, M Tellys, because uh, was that was earlier today, right? So Gimli just going to try and put some folds on his cloak, too. And then for Aragorn, maybe I try and uh, darken the hair on him a little bit. Uh, like so, maybe get that to separate from the cloak. Shadow side here on Gimli. And let's reinforce Gandalf's staff here. I want that, uh, that was starting to look a little bit like a uh, cattail there, so we're going to change that around too. Ah, Jack, nice to see you again. Ah, I'm telling you, a box of Hawaiian treats. Someone, uh, a uh, friend of ours from Hawaii sent us a box, and one of the things they sent was spam and pineapple. It was like some it was a spam, but it was like pineapple. It was like Hawaiian spam, and it had like pineapple in it or something. We never did eat that. We never did eat the Hawaiian spam. Seriously, it was it was a can of spam, and it was Hawaiian. Oh, let's get his uh, arrows here. Quiver of arrows. I'm going to maybe throw a little bit of light on Gimli's helmet. Right there. Maybe even across his shoulders. Like so. Uh, let's see, I'd love to eat the Spam with pineapple. Boy, actually, m is I could see that. Ah, so f uh, Flesh and Blood, another card game. I thought, oh, and the MetaZoo, that's right. And if everybody could please give m is a follow, that would be sensational, because uh, m is you're still doing uh, a, a lot of the MetaZoo uh, stuff, right, on stream? So yes, everybody, if you could please give m is a follow, then you would uh, get a chance to see him uh, doing some of his fun meta zoo. Uh, Landress, uh, he he was here. He was definitely actually was. Uh, I just uh, got a chat message in then there about not too long ago. He's got to be around. Well, unless of course. Well, let's see. He's out in Frisco, so well, it is it is after midnight there in Frisco as well. So. Uh, a lot of MetaZoo and some other uh, trading card games and even some, uh, some miniatures painting. Ah, uh, boy, m -tell is, uh, you'll have to shoot me some pictures of what you've been doing with the miniature painting. It'll be fun to see that. So yeah, now that i got my smaller bit, now we can maybe start to refine some more things also here on Edoras. I am going to just take another picture again because people get upset if there's not... 200 pictures even though there's the video so here, let's get another picture shot I might also do some stuff on the mountains as well uh, in the background here in fact let me grab this and this is the same swirling style of brushstroke that we use on our miniatures. 
It's just about softening up some edges. That's all we're trying to do there. Uh, he sent me a text about your painting, and I was at the oh, at the movies. Yeah, I'm always. Uh, this has really been fun here. I've been really itching to do a, a scene from Edoras. So it's really cool to get a chance to do this. Now that I got my smaller brush, we can start to maybe do some more roof lines here. Yeah, we've only been at this, uh, well, 2 hours 53 minutes now. So we have not been at this very long. And this is from, as always, from start to finish. I uh, haven't, uh, none of this was done in advance, or we haven't been working on this. It's all just been tonight. I'm going to come back into our, this level. Give it a couple of our lighter shapes. Try and uh, distinguish a couple of roof lines, perhaps. I don't know how much later I want that to be. And then I thought, oh yeah, let's get a couple of uh, lighter roof shapes over here too, maybe with a sp uh, little touch of our Terra Rosa. Okay. And then we'll... Uh, Basically, the the watchtowers here. See if I can raise those up. Ah, Pascal, how you doing? Pascal, oh, Pascal. Uh, if everybody could please follow Pascal, that would be great. Boy, uh, Pascal, I really I saw your that uh, band of adventurers there that you've been painting. Those are really sensational figures. Oh, thanks, Pascal. Uh, definitely, uh, Pascal, post uh, your Instagram link to all those amazing figures that you did. Uh, well, you got like a bunch of Instagram links to them now, but uh, definitely include those so that folks can catch those. I don't know if you saw, this is one, the one that we did last week right here. So this was the Argonauts. And uh, get these guys side by side. Really fun doing these landscapes here. Ah, there we go. Yeah, Pascal, those were really amazing. Uh, they're your standard kind of 28 mil figs, right? So actually, how was it working on, on the 28 mil figs? Because I know you do a lot of really incredible things with the busts and the large scale figures. Ah, so about 40 mil. Okay, but yeah, they were really amazing. The the bases on those, just uh, so many great lighting effects on them. So yeah, actually, if you should really go check out uh, that, that link that Pascal just posted there, because really incredible figures. Uh, let's see, I, I learned what spam... Besides the email spam, uh, it's a good diversion from the big stuff. Oh, uh, it was, uh, yeah. Well, Pascal, that's uh, we try and tell people how painting in 2D is excellent training for painting in on your miniatures because the it's all the principles are exactly the same. Because when we were drawing this out, we were talking about center of interest and all that sort of stuff. And oh, yeah, we haven't done one of these in a while, just like we do on our miniatures. There's all of a sudden this and the sky they look almost exactly alike, but here you got all this yellow, the warm greens, and then you got the cooler blues in the background here, like so. It's unbelievable the difference that makes. Let me see if I can't. I'm just gonna try and get this thing cleaned out here. See if I can snag some of my. Nice light color. I might even just throw a couple of drops of thin almost directly onto that so we can really thin this stuff down. 
and maybe use it on our mountains in a couple of areas. Yeah, Neary Field, it was the same thing. Uh, well, you remember when we were doing it with the Argonoth? And the Argonoth just looks so dramatically different. You didn't see the difference between the yellows in the, on the mountainside and the skies. Or in the sky, sorry, not the skies. Uh, let's see it. So, yeah, Jack, that was, uh, well, well, in Boy Scouts and back when I was a kid, a lot of spam was consumed. Uh, it's been many years since I've eaten spam. I'll tell you that. I mean, I don't even know if it would qualify as super cheap bacon. I'm not even sure. Uh, let's see. Uh, Pascal, it, it really is so different. Here, let's. Uh, this is kind of a classic miniature. I like to use this one. There, there's a couple. Okay, so here, uh, maybe I'll even try and get closer. Now, if we do this, yeah, that looks a little lighter than, than the rest of them, but minus the orange and the intensity and the warmth of that, it doesn't really <coughs> it doesn't really separate, does it? But when you bring back the color intensity, look at the difference that makes. All of a sudden, now it looks like it's being illuminated. It's not the brightness of it, it's the intensity of the color and the, the color temperature change. Huge, huge difference. Actually, here, now that we're starting to do more detailed things, why don't we uh, stay close up here? <laughs> Plastic bacon is probably about the right uh, the right word for it there. Actually, that reminds me, I gotta get me some turkey bacon from the store tomorrow. That's what I need to get, is some turkey bacon. Haven't had that in a while. All right, now I'm gonna firm up the side of our cliff face here by also firming up what's going on with our mountain there. <laughs> to today, that's that, that's a really good one. Uh, fail cast bacon. That's what spam is. Wow, do so. You know, that was another thing. That was another vinyl food group that I ate when I was a kid was uh, was steakums. Wow. It's a miracle that we're still alive today eating stuff like steakums. Oh, actually, uh, oh, so Catalan has posted the, the village in La Rioja that is just like Eteros. Wow, uh, that's... Uh, that it, it, <clears throat> well, the best thing about it, uh, right, uh, is that it's actual, it's real, unlike this, they just tore down. Now, uh, someone was trying to tell me that they left this up there. This is not there anymore. They had to take it down. All of this stuff here, they, like, basically cut out every block of grass, and it all go back. They, like, they numbered every single block of grass, and it all had to go back exactly where it was. And I was trying to tell that person that this this is just a hill. There's nothing here anymore. But he was trying to tell me that there's a tourist attraction there. And I'm like, there's nothing left there anymore. I mean, I could be wrong, but I do remember watching the extras. And in the extras, they talked about how all this stuff had to be torn down. Now, who knows, maybe they built some of this somewhere else, but on this hilltop there, because it was some kind of a national park or whatever, yeah, they had to put it all back the way it was. Now, of course, they didn't blow it up, but they did have to tear it all down and put all the uh, sod and everything back to where it was supposed to go. I'm right, just going to capture a couple of my rooftops here, if we can. Do I need to get 
shadow facts a little bit later here. Maybe we will. Yeah. And uh, I don't really want to go too much lighter on their on their cloaks. I might go a little bit lighter on Gimli's helmet right there to get kind of the uh, the glint of steel or something like that. So now you've got Gimli and. Uh,